If you're a beginner game developer, you may have wondered if you're on the right path in your game dev journey. You are not alone. I should know. I spent the last two years going from this to this. And today, I wanna to show you what that journey looked like for me and give you nine tips to help you moving forward. And if you're a more experienced developer, be sure to leave your experience in the comment below and let me know if your experience was similar to mine. Tip number one is to just start somewhere. When I first started, I didn't know anything about how games were actually made. Programming languages, game engines, none of that. And honestly, I just was scared to make the wrong decision to the point that I didn't do anything for a while. Eventually, I just started watching tutorials and my search led me here, Harvard's CS50, Intro to Game Development. It's a completely free online video series that walks you through recreating a dozen popular video games. I watched the videos and I copied everything line by line. And in two months, I had recreated games like Pong, Mario, Pokemon, and Zelda. I absolutely loved this course. It clicked so well with my form of thinking and eventually it made the switch over to a game engine much easier. I still recommend this course, even if you're a more experienced developer. The important takeaway here is don't worry about what you use. Just get started. You can always pivot later. Tip number two, your first few games are gonna suck, but they're gonna teach you so much. Near the end of the year, I felt like I had a strong enough understanding and I was ready to try my hand at my own project. Hugh Hopper was my first attempt. It was a puzzle platformer where standing on a platform would slowly change the color. Eventually, the platform would disappear permanently, score points based on how quickly you complete the level and how much time remained on each platform. It wasn't a bad first attempt in my opinion, but I quickly saw all the problems that came with trying to do everything in code only. Seriously, this hurts me to look at now. And that leads me to tip number three, learn your tools. At this point, I knew I needed a game engine and I had a much better idea of what I was looking for in a game engine. For me, the one that made the most sense was Unity. And for Unity tutorials, no one is probably more well-known than Brackies. I spent all of January 2022 working through the 2D platformer and tower defense tutorials. I initially watched all of them to figure out how to code games of a specific genre. Looking back, I learned way more about what Unity could and couldn't do just from watching the videos. You don't have to copy everything line by line or even understand all of it, but just by watching, slowly you're gonna start picking everything up. Tip number four, build as many games as you can. At this point, it had been three months and I had only built one project for myself. So I decided to move away from tutorials entirely but I hit a pretty big snag. I had no idea what I wanted to build. So I started researching again, this time for ideas, and I came across Game Jams. A short time frame and someone else to give me the theme, it was perfect for my circumstance at the time. And like a lot of young game developers, I got hooked on them. My very first Game Jam entry never got submitted. I couldn't actually figure out how to create a build in Unity. And even to this day, I've still never managed to make a build of that game. Seriously, I have no idea what I did. Next up was a little game called Prisma. You bounce lasers off mirrors to unlock these little doors and clear each level. It was only one level and it looked awful. But even now, I think there's a lot of potential in this idea. It was also my first introduction to the game dev YouTuber, Vimlark, who I absolutely recommend you follow, especially if you love game jams as much as I do. Next up was an attempt at Metroidvania Month 15. Metroidvanias are my dream genre, and I thought I'd give it an attempt. I made a sorcerer similar to LeBlanc from League of Legends, and she could shoot a projectile, swing from this little grapple beam, and create a clone that she could teleport back to later. It was also my first attempt at pixel art. Ultimately, this failed too. I had another issue with the build process, and I missed the submission deadline. Fortunately, I managed to figure out where the issue was in this one. But at the time, it unfortunately led me into my next tip, which is tip number five, take breaks and avoid burnout. I had been going so hard with learning and I was so upset that I missed the deadline that I took a break for three months. Seriously, don't go that hard. Take breaks if you need it and avoid burnout. All right, back to the game jam. I made a little top-down shooter called Radiance 2691 and I have no idea where the name came from. It was my best game up to this point, 
It was a complete game experience with a title screen, a full gameplay loop, upgrades, and a score system. Pretty good for about six months into game development. Then I made another attempt at a Metroidvania for the Fantasia Game Jam. But I spent all my time trying to figure out the art and level design. So much so that I didn't actually have any gameplay. I got angry again, and I took another three-month break. But I really liked the idea that I had for this game jam, and we'll revisit that in a little while. Finally, I created a little hot cocoa simulation game for the Winter Melon Jam. This was mainly just to get me doing something. I was getting frustrated at myself that I hadn't done anything in three months. Tip number six, find a good community. The start of 2023 brought me the most rapid progress I have seen as a game developer. I joined a game dev tournament called GDKO, or Game Dev Knockout, hosted every year by fellow YouTuber and good friend Xanderwood. Seriously, go check out his channel. The community around this tournament was absolutely invaluable to me. I got so much feedback from so many other developers. I was able to reach out to other game developers that I really respected, and I was getting some amazing feedback from them. As soon as you can, find a community of game developers who you respect and take in as much of their advice as you can. During this time, I recreated my Fantasia Game Jam entry in the form of Shiloh. It's a 2D platformer with the same sort of aesthetic, but I still ran into a lot of the issues concerning not enough gameplay and oof, the movement is terrible. I made another 2D platformer called Heart Song, this time with post-processing and my first delve into audio and composing. One of my favorites from the tournament was a top-down shooter called The Raxis. The focus here was on making a boss fight, but I decided to add in a couple of roguelike elements to give it a little bit more replayability. And I didn't do either one of those things right, but I learned so much from this round. And finally, one of my best entries to date, the recreation of the Atari classic Centipede. I decided to stay true to the original, but I added in as many different polish elements as I could, including a somewhat updated visual style with these little pixels that pop off. And if you're interested, those were some of my first YouTube videos. I'll have a link to the devlogs for both the Raxus and Centipede down in the description. I left the tournament in the semifinal round, which I was quite proud of. Be ready. I'm shooting for the finals next year. Tip number seven, make a damn decision. Over the next three months, I started work on four different games. All of them were meant to be my first commercial release, and I wasn't satisfied with any of them, to the point that they're all still just prototypes. Tip number eight, learn from others. I decided to go back to game jams. Up to this point, I had just been doing game jams on my own. And there were several pretty obvious weaknesses that I had. So I decided to start working with other people and see how they approached their disciplines. I worked as a composer for a little game called Desert Dessert. Worked with a 3D modeler on Rogemon. And worked with fellow GDKO participant and good friend Keltfire on a puzzle game called Cross Circuit. And finally, I worked solo on a little game called Retro. This was made over five days because there was a giant prize pool. It was basically a recreation of my old game Thoraxis, but it feels so much more polished. And that brings us to the present. I've been a game developer for a little over two years now. Truthfully, I don't consider myself a very good game developer, but I have learned a ton over these last two years, and I've made some amazing friends along the way. Right now, I'm gearing up for the next GDKO. And I'm also working on the design for my first commercial release. And if you want to hear more about that, be sure to let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe to the channel so that you can get notified later. The final tip I want to leave you with is this. Don't be so hard on yourself. Game development is hard. There are a lot of disciplines that you have to learn. And it can be really easy to beat yourself up when you're struggling to learn one thing. Be patient with yourself. Let yourself fail, learn, and grow. Let's get a conversation going on this. I'd love to hear about your game development journey so far. Let us know what you've accomplished, the things you've learned, or any recommendations you might have down in the comments below. And be sure to show love and support to the other game developers who are on their journey too. Take care, and I'll see you next time.